this is part two of my three-part video series featuring the Olight Rechargeable Baton Series flashlights, featuring the S10R and the S30R. What I'd like to do for this particular video is test out all the mode outputs of both flashlights using some exact measurements, some laws of physics, and with a few special guests. Let's get started. Flashlight manufacturers usually always describe the brightness of the flashlights in terms of lumens for luminance, which describes the total amount of light coming out of the emitter. There's other concepts for light that could be used. Candelas are the intensity of a light source, similar to a unit of power like a watt. I like thinking of it as the strength of a light. Lumens, or luminance, is the total amount of light coming out of a light source. So it's the flux of photons with an intensity given in candelas passing through a given solid angle, for example, a sphere around a candle, or a flashlight in this case, where lumens equals candelas times steridians. So it's calculated using something called an integrating sphere, which is very expensive. It's exact, but expensive, costing around $20,000. So unfortunately, I don't have an integrating sphere to be able to test lumens accurately. Although if anyone would like to donate one to me, please make checks payable to the Urban Prepper Foundation. Lux, or illuminance, is the intensity of an area, so it's the flux of photons passing through a given surface area in lumens per square meter. Fortunately, you don't need an integrating sphere to calculate this. All you need is a little $20 to $30 lux meter, as you see here. So the lux value of this area is going to be different depending on where you're looking at on the beam. So in the center of the beam, in the hot spot, it's going to have the higher lux value, and the more you get out to the sides of it, it's going to have a lower lux value to it. So it's basically the lights hitting this surface area and reflecting back, and our eyes are interpreting it as a brightness level. And that's what a lux meter is for. What I'd like to do for this video is use this lux meter for testing out the throw of the Olight Baton Series flashlights at various distances for the various modes. Now this lux meter gets down to 0.2 lux, which is very, very dim. So I don't really care about that kind of light. I care about light that I actually could distinguish an object with. So that gets us to a concept called civil twilight. Here's a diagram of the Earth's horizon. This is daylight that you see here, here's nighttime, and here's the horizon line. So at nighttime, the sun's gonna be below the horizon line, and we're gonna have to wait for it to go above the horizon line for it to become daylight. So civil twilight is defined as when the geometric center of the sun is six degrees below the horizon. So it's described as the limit at which twilight illumination is sufficient for terrestrial objects to be clearly distinguishable. So basically, when it's at that civil twilight light, that's when you could actually distinguish an object. So a person, a deer, anything like that. Vehicle headlights are commonly tested uh, at 3.2 lux as, as being the definition of civil twilight. Wikipedia defines it at 3.4 lux. So for my testing, I'm going to do anywhere between 3.2 and 3.4 lux because that's what I really care about is when I could distinguish what an object is, not really what the lumens is. You know, for me, it doesn't matter that much because it could be a, a floodlight or a, a, a thrower or anything, but I just want to be able to distinguish what that object is. I think that's important for flashlights. So that's what I'm going to be using for my test. Testing. I attach the flashlight to a tripod that's exactly one and a half meters in height and I have the front of that flashlight, the bezel, exactly one meter away from an off-white wall and I attach the lux meter to that wall so we could capture the lux readings of the center of the hotspot at one meter's distance. We're also going to capture the lux readings at one meter distance from the center of the hotspot to see what the flood is for each of the modes of the flashlights. Let's start off first with the S30R. The S30R moon mode, or firefly mode, is very, very dim at just one lumen. At the center of the hotspot, it has a lux value of 8.5. One meter from the center of that hotspot, the lux drops all the way down to 0.1, so almost nothing. Low mode, which is at 20 lumens, has a lux value of 227 at the center of the hotspot at one meter's distance. If you go one meter out from the center of that hotspot, the lux drops all the way down to 0.5. The medium mode at 100 lumens has a lux value of 1267 at the center of the hotspot. If you go one meter away from that center of the hotspot, it has a lux value of 2.6, so just below civil twilight. The S30R has a high output of 600 lumens. At the center of the hotspot at one meter's distance, the lux value is 4950. And if you go one meter from the center of that hotspot, it drops all the way down to 9.3 lux. And then finally, turbo mode at a thousand lumens. At one meter's distance, the center of the hotspot has a lux value of approximately 7,010. When you go one meter from the center of that hotspot, it drops all the way down to 10 lux. So with all of these modes, you can see that it definitely has a very bright hotspot, and then it kind of tapers out as far as the flood goes. 
Now moving on to the S10R. The moon mode or firefly mode is very, very dim. It has a lumen value of 0.5. At the center of the hot spot, the lux value is only 0.2. And when you go one meter from the edge of that hot spot, it drops down to 0.1, so barely nothing. The low mode has a lumen value of 5. At one meter distance from the wall, the center of the hot spot has a lux value of 22. When you go one meter from the center of that hot spot, it drops down to 0.2. The S10R has a medium mode of 85 lumens. One meter's distance from the wall, at the center of the hot spot, you have a lux value of 567. When you go one meter from that center of the hot spot, it drops down to 2.2, so not even civil twilight. And then finally we come to high mode on the S10R, which has a lumen value of 400. At the center of the hot spot, at one meter's distance, the lux value is 2760. One meter's distance from the center of that hot spot, the lux value drops down to 10.2. Now that we've captured the lux value at the center of the hot spots for each of the modes on the Baton series flashlights, we need to figure out how we could leverage that for determining when civil twilight is reached and at what distance for each of the modes. So to do that, we're going to have to use something called inverse square law. Now I'm no expert at inverse square law, so I'm going to have to bring in a pinch hitter. So let's bring out Hurley Smith, inventor of the pocket protector, to describe inverse square law and how we could use it. Hey Tup, so inverse square law is defined as the following. So the intensity of light observed from the source of constant intrinsic luminosity falls off as the square of the distance from the object. Thus, if I double the distance to a light source, the observed intensity is decreased to one half to the power two, which is equal to one fourth its original value. So in layman's terms, top. So say you have a lux value of 100 from one meter distance. If you were to go out to two meters distance, you may think that that lux value is now gonna be 50, but no, you're wrong, top. It's actually gonna be 25. That's what inverse square law says. So what you should do, top, is this. You're gonna take your one meter distance, the lux value that you have at that, and you're gonna go back to a distance until that lux value is going to be equal to 3.2 to 3.4, which is right at civil twilight using inverse square law. It's really quite simple, Tup. Now back to you. Special shout out to Hurley Smith for providing us with that detailed explanation of inverse square law. So based off of his recommendation, here's what I did. I went online and found an inverse square law calculator, and I put in all of the lux readings that I captured at the various dis distances for all of the modes on both of these flashlights. So I put in the starting distance of one meter, and then I put in the lux value of whatever it was for that particular mode. And then I, what I did was this. On the ending distance, I changed it to various distances until I got to that civil twilight lux reading of between 3.2 and 3.4. So I just uh, kind of modified this to fairly even numbers. So like eight meters, nine meters, eight and a half meters, uh, nothing uh, too fancy beyond that. And I just calculated it until I got to that civil twilight range. And here's what I came up with for all the modes. So on the S30R, I have a table here with multiple columns. I have the mode, uh, lumens, the lux value at the center of the hotspot, the lux value at one meter distance from the center of that hotspot. Here's the percentage difference of what that edge measurement was compared to the center distance. And as you can see, it's a big difference there. It's not even a full percentage on most cases. Here's the most important column. So here's the civil twilight distance in meters for that particular mode. And here it is, the civil twilight in feet. So I kind of omitted moonlight mode because I didn't think it was uh, applicable. Uh, but on low mode at 20 lumens, I had a lux value of 227. Using inverse square law, I calculated that the civil twilight would be 8.25 meters. So that's when I'd be able to distinguish an object. That's as far away as I could based off of that law. On medium mode at 100 meters at 1267 lux, uh, that civil twilight distance is 20 meters. On high with 600 lumens, uh, that civil twilight is 38 meters. And on turbo at 1000 lumens with a 7010 lux at the center of the hotspot, that civil twilight distance in meters is 46 meters. Now if you look on Olight's website, they're going to say that the maximum throw of the flashlight is 160 meters on turbo. And I put that into the civil, the, into the uh, inverse square law calculator, and if I put in that one, one meter distance with the lux value that I captured with the, uh, the lux meter at 7010 and put 160 meters in, it's going to be very, very small. It's going to be about 0 0.2 uh, lux, which is the smallest number that I could capture on my lux meter. So what that tells me is that uh, that distance that's advertised is just the absolute maximum distance that any kind of light is reached to it, even if it's so 
small that you can't even recognize it. So I think that's pretty common with most manufacturers. They're going to do that in a controlled environment. Uh, but I don't really care about that because I wouldn't be able to tell what an object was. So I care about what the civil twilight is going to tell me that that maximum is. And based off of what I'm seeing uh, on the turbo distance, it's going to be around 46 meters. Uh, moving on, here's what the S10R has for the same, uh, based off of the same uh, table. So again, I omitted a moonlight on low mode at 5 lumens. I have a lux value of 22 at the center of the hotspot, so that gives me a civil twilight distance of 2.5 meters. Uh, medium mode at 85 lumens, I have 13 meters. And then high mode of 400 lumens, I have 28.5 lumens. So what we're going to do now is go out to a field and test all of these out uh, at various distances based off of the calculations from inverse square law. I'm here in a dark field with Mr. Monkey Man 50 and he's going to help me test out when we reach civil twilight for all of the various modes on the two different baton series flashlights made by Olight. I have some test equipment here, I have the lux meter, I have some cones, I have a little uh, distance measurer, and then we have Mr. Monkey Man 50 on a stand. So we're going to set him up at the various distances that we calculated uh, for civil twilight out on this field and we're going to see if the flashlights are actually able to uh, catch enough light to be able to recognize them. So let's get started. So as you can see, it's not completely pitch black out here, but it's fairly dark at just 0.2 lux on average. All right, so I have the S10R on the tripod at the same height as Mr. Monkey Man 50, who's also sitting on a stand over there. This is at the 2.5 meter distance, and it has a lumen value of 5. Here we are at the medium setting at 85 lumens, and we're at a distance of 13 meters. And here's the high setting at 400 lumens at a distance of 28.5 meters. As you can see, he's visible over there, although the ground is much more uh, flooded and visible than uh, way off there in the distance. Here's what the high mode looks like from Mr. Monkey Man's point of view. Again, 400 lumens. Now let's test out the S30R, starting off first on low, which is at 20 lumens. So we're at a distance of 8.25 meters. Here's medium mode at 100 lumens at a distance of 20 meters. This is high mode at 600 lumens at a distance of 38 meters, so right at civil twilight. As you can see, he's definitely out there. Here's turbo mode of 1,000 lumens at a distance of 46 meters. As you can see, it's also getting a little misty out here at night, uh, but he's definitely out there. Let's see if the camera picks him up. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. Here's what 1,000 lumens looks like from Mr. Monkey Man's point of view right at Civil Twilight. That's going to do it for this portion of the video. Now there is some ambient lighting out here, so the lux values aren't going to be totally correct. Although I think it gives a rough estimate on when civil twilight is reached based off of the calculations from inverse square law. That's going to do it for part two of this video series featuring the Olight rechargeable batons. I hope that you guys are enjoying it so far and that it wasn't too nerdy for you. We captured some lux readings using the lux meter. We used the laws of physics to try to determine when we had reached that civil twilight point to see at what distance for each of the modes we could spot a monkey. So please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comments section. Uh, this wasn't an exact scientific experiment. For example, my lux meter died on me uh, during the actual filming on the outside portions of this. So I went back the following day and captured the lux readings at the various distances that were calculated. I found that they were fairly accurate, especially the farther away I got from the camera. The closer I was to the camera, there was some ambient lighting which kind of uh, uh, varied the, the distances a little bit. Uh, but I think it, for the most part, is fairly accurate. So again, please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comment section. I'll probably use this kind of testing in future flashlight videos and stay tuned for part three in which we'll wrap up this video series featuring the Olight rechargeable batons. See ya!